There once was a crochet airframe named Tucket. Oh, family friendly. <laughs> Today, we're gonna be making bucket hats. So we're gonna bucket. <laughs> Let's begin right next. Hi, I'm Mikey from the Crochet Crowd and thank you so much for joining our channel today. I'm here to inspire you and create magic with your crochet hook. Are you ready to play? Oh yeah, that sounds good. Welcome and let's do a bucket hat together. The title of this video is the size that we're gonna be working with today. This particular pattern has several sizes including all the way from zero to six months to an adult size. You'll find a link in the more information of this video in order to find the free patterns for that. And this is designed by Sarah from Repeat Crafter Me. You can see that she has extensions that you can add to it whether it's eyes or crab claws, uh, claws or maybe even a whale. That's something that you can decide for yourself but today I'm only focusing on the basics of these hats. So I'm going to recommend a couple things. She has Super Saver as Red Heart Super Saver as her suggestion. If you are uh, knowing anything about heat, cotton is your best way to go. So Lily Sugar and Cream is the better way to go. It's 100% cotton. Cotton keeps you warm but it also keeps you cool. So this is what you would be looking at. So if you're finding acrylic in the Super Saver too hot to wear, switch over to your um, Lily Sugar and Cream. You can do Bernat Handicrafter or maybe even Peaches and Cream. We're going to be using a 5 millimeter size H crochet hook today and let's begin the size that's promised in the video title. So let's begin the toddler size. We're going to do a magic ring. It's also called an adjustable circle and all you need to do is put the yarn in front of your hand, no knot, and just use two fingers and circle the yarn that is going to the yarn ball around your finger and then cross over the top and use your third finger to hold it in a cross formation. I'll show you one more time. We do have separate videos available on techniques and this is one of them. So just in front, two fingers wrap around and turn your hand over and just hold. You're going to scoop up underneath the first one and you're going to scoop this one here and pull through and then just take your fingers out carefully and just chain one to lock it. And so you're going to crochet over top of the two strands here that make up the adjustable ring or the magic ring. And we're now officially going to start round number one. Throughout the instructions on this one here, I always put the chaining of starting around at the beginning of my instructions. Uh, Sarah from Repeat Crafter Me has it at the end. So just I'll be making those adjustments for myself of just telling you what to do at the start of each instruction. So we're going to begin and you're going to start with 11 double crochets into the center of the ring. Make sure that you go over the two strands. Okay and we're gonna count those out together. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and 11. And before you do anything you want to count to make sure you have only 11. So start for the first one. So you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And just pull on this just slightly, not all the way, and just join it to the 11th one back. So if you're not sure just count it back. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. Even as an experienced crocheter I always count back just to verify and join it with a slip stitch. Take out your hook just pull up a large loop and turn the ring or the whole circle upside down and using your fingers just pull on this strand here. And just pull, pull, pull and that will close down the center of the ring. You're not quite done though because if you don't secure that, that is going to fall out on you. Sorry my hat is hitting the camera. So just going in and you're just gonna stay on the back side of the, of the circle and just jam it through and and if you turn it over you should never see that going through. So you're just gonna go through once and pull tight and if you separate the fibers from each other it actually will get stuck even better. So you're gonna go through a second time and then finally a third time is a charm. Okay and always through different paths to make it get stuck better. 
Once you have that done you can securely cut that strand and if you don't do that then it will fall out. And then you're going to turn it back over to the good side, the right side and you're going to place your hook back in, pull tight and that was round number one. We're going to begin round number two. So round number two you're going to chain two and remember what I said to you that uh, she provided that at the end of uh, round number one I always provide that chaining and building at the beginning of the instructions. It's just my personal preference and it's how I've been teaching for years. So I want you to place in two double crochets into each stitch going all the way around. You have a total of 11 double crochets so therefore you'll end up with 11 sorry you'll end up with 22 double crochets at the end of that. So there's two in the first one and then two into the next and etc. So please do this all the way around. I'm gonna show you a cheating technique that you may find really quite handy for something that you can use on this and in the future. Place in two double crochets in each stitch and I'll be right back. Now I'm coming up to the very last stitch that's available to me. It looks like there's two right? So new crocheters what they do is they assume that this one right here is a stitch when it's actually part of the first one. So then they end up creating extra stitches by doing so. I'm going to show you a cheating technique because what happens is we have to put two into the last stitch here. Let me show you what's gonna happen if I, if you don't follow my little technique that's not written anywhere. It's just a little bit of advice. I put in two and then I join it to the top of the first double crochet. What this does, see that gap? It's obvious right? So we can get rid of that. So instead of doing what I just showed you and that's part of the instructions but you'll always see it and it might bother you like it does me. So instead put in two in there but watch. Put the first one in first and then treat the next one as a two together double crochet and what we're going to do is that we're going to comply and put the second one in here so that we have it but we're also gonna put a leg of that stitch into this space here which will then cover that space and gap. So to do this you're gonna yarn over and going into the same stitch you're supposed to go into. Yarn over, pull through and pull through two. Technically you would yarn over and pull through two and join but what I'm trying to tell you see this space right here? Yarn over and go right into the space and pull through, pull through two. You now have three loops on the hook. So when you pull through all three loops that just makes it one stitch at the end. See? It's a two together. Then you join it to the first double crochet and that leg that uh, we just created fills the space in so you don't see it. So you can use that pretty much any time and I do this on my own hats because it's something that really does bother me a lot. So let's move on to the third round and you can use that technique throughout this whole thing. In round number three here's the sequence. You're gonna chain two, doesn't count as anything and you'll place in two double crochets into the first stitch. Then the next stitch is gonna be by itself so it's one double crochet by itself. So here's the sequence. The next one has two double crochets that share the same stitch and then the next double crochet is by itself and I need you to do that all the way around for round number three. I'll be right back in a moment. So in keeping with the sequence the last stitch is one double crochet by itself but I'm gonna do my little cheating technique and join that spacing with it too. And so I'll just grab it and put two together using the last stitch and that space and that complies to making that as one stitch at the end and then join and then that covers in that space that you can't see. Let's move on to round number four. In round number four we're gonna chain two doesn't count as anything and here's your sequence. The first one is two double crochets into the same stitch. Then the next two stitches are each one double crochet on their own. So one by itself and two by itself. So the sequence to get around number four is that the next one will have two into the same stitch. So one and two share the same and then the next two stitches are by themselves. So please do this all the way around for round number four. In coming around at number four the last two are by themselves and I just do my last little trick on that last one just to kind of bring in and fill in the space. Let's begin number five in a moment. Let's begin number five and we're gonna start off and you're gonna chain two. Now we're gonna get just slightly bigger. We're not gonna overgrow it too fast and so we're going to place in two double crochets into the first one. Then the next ten are gonna be by themselves. So let's do that together. So we have one, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. As soon as you have ten done, the next one is two into the same one. And then it's gonna be another ten by itself and then two into the next one and then another ten. And you'll do that all the way around for round number five and I'll be right back. So in the last one, it is the tenth one on its own and so I'll do my little trick and fill in that space like I showed you. And we're moving on then to round number six. Now six is gonna be very similar but I'm only gonna just tell you what it is because it's just easier. So you're gonna chain two and in the same one of the join you are going to apply two double crochets. Now what we did before we were doing ten by itself and then two. This time in this round number six it's gonna be eleven by itself and then two. Eleven by itself and then two and etc. and you'll do that all the way around and that will be round number six. So please do that and I'll be right back. Coming up to the end of round number six and I'm just putting the last one together like that and we're going to join it. We're moving on to round number seven next. Round number seven we're gonna do another growth round really quickly and just chain two and apply two double crochet into the first one. So unlike the other last two rounds this one you're going to place in twelve double crochets on their own and then two into the next twelve and then two and etc. And you'll do that then for round number seven which will then conclude the final sizing. So do that and I'll be right back. Okay concluding number seven and just doing my little magic trick at the end. And we're gonna move on to eight through eleven next. Rounds number eight, nine, ten, and eleven are all going to be the same and you'll chain two, won't count as anything and you'll just apply one double crochet in each stitch all the way around. You can do that little magic trick I showed you at the end. And so I need you to do those four rounds and when I pick you back up in a few minutes it'll be or a few moments it'll be uh, the twelfth round. And so please do those four rounds on your own. One double crochet in each and I'll be right back. So let's move on to round number twelve. We're going to chain up two doesn't count as anything and you'll place in two double crochets into the same stitch. Now the next one is gonna be one by itself and that's gonna be your sequence. So the next one is two into the same stitch and then the one after that is two in or sorry is one into the same one. So it's basically two and one, two and one and you'll do that all the way around for round number twelve. Just coming around to the end here of number twelve doing my little trick and then putting it together with the first double crochet. Rounds number 13, 14, and 15 are next. Rounds number 13, 14, and 15 are all the same. Chain up two and apply one double crochet in each of the stitches going all the way around. I need you to do those three rounds and I'll pick you up at the end of number 15 in just a moment. So please just one double crochet in each stitch around. So let's do round number 16. It is the final round. Some people really don't like doing the crab stitch or the reverse single crochet. You decide what you prefer. If you don't wanna do it, just chain up one and apply one single crochet around, join with the slip stitch, fasten off. But I will show it the way that it says in the pattern. So you're gonna chain up one and you'll single crochet into the first one. And instead of advancing forward like you normally would, you're gonna go backward. Okay, so let's do that. So you're just gonna go into the stitch before and then just yarn over going in, yarn over, pull through and then pull through two. And the way that you're sweeping that it's gonna create the action in about three stitches you watch. It creates a beautiful little ribbing effect on the edge. So you just keep going to one stitch before and single crochet and you will notice that you end up with this beautiful edging just like you see. So I want you to do that all the way around for the final round and I'll be right back and we'll just uh, weave in our tails and be done for today. Okay, once you're all the way around you're just gonna slip stitch to the beginning, reverse single crochet and pull through. We're not quite done. We need to fasten that off inside the hat and so we're just gonna pull the yarn through and turn the hat so that you can see the inside of the brim area. Grab that tapestry needle that we had been working with before and when we do this we wanna just secure this in and if you can break apart some of the plies, not just go between strands, uh, it'll be a lot better for you and you're just going to go through. So when you turn it around you should never see 
the needle. So pulling it through. So once going back in the opposite direction through a different path again split some, some of those fibers. Don't be scared to do that. It's when people go between the fibers that is a problem. That's when it weasels its way out but it's a lot harder if you split the fibers. Some people will disagree anyway. It doesn't matter right? Social media it's fun <laughs> some days. Okay so we're gonna just go back and forth a total of three times and once you've done that and you're satisfied you're good to go and your hat is completely done and this would be the toddler version of these cute little bucket hats and I did mine in dark pine. Kind of fun. Kind of reminds me of summer camp a bit and let me just zoom you out. Yeah there it is and that's it for today. We hope you have a good one and I'll see you again next time. Bye bye.